good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you, and uh, let's uh, bow together as we prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this uh, good start to a wonderful spring morning and for the opportunity that we have to gather as your people, both in person and, in, and online, uh, to worship you and to magnify your holy name. And I continue to pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon us and particularly upon Pastor David as he brings the message today that you've laid upon his heart and help us to be receptive and open to what it is that you're calling us to do and to be. And uh, may you be honored and glorified through our worship today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we can clap. Yeah. It's awesome to be together. It is awesome to be together. Such a great, just like every day, come together, worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's give him all we got today. Let's dig deep, open our souls, open our hearts wide open. Let's give him everything we've got today in worship. So let's all stand. Going to have a little fun here with this song. Going to get the accordion cranked up. So shake out all the cobwebs. Here we go. Down the mountain, the river flows. Breeze refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valleys and over the hills. River is ocean, the river is here. River of God sets our feet a dancing. River of God sets our hearts with cheer. River of God fills our mouths with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. River of God is teeming with life. No who touch it can be revived. No to linger on this river shore. Come back thirsting for more of the Lord. River of God sets our feet a dancing. River of God fills our hearts with cheer. River of God fills our mouths with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. Up the mountain we love to go, find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run, dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. River of God, sings our feet a dancing. River of God, fills our hearts with cheer. River of God, fills our mouths with laughter. We rejoice for the river is here. Down the mountain the river flows, brings refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valleys and over the fields, river is rushing, the river is here. River of God sets our feet a dancing, river of God fills our hearts a cheer. River of God fills our mouths with laughter, we rejoice for the river is here. We rejoice for the river is here. That's a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow. 
focusing our attention, our praise, our glory upon you. And we want to lift to you, God, all those that continue to be on our prayer list, those that we mention in our devotional time each and every day. And this morning we want to add uh, to that request uh, Wanda Burnett, who will have surgery in the morning. We pray that you'd uh, heal her and that you'd be with those who perform the surgery, that they will have wisdom and discernment. And we want to pray for uh, both Sally English and Gloria Dauterman, who are both recuperating from surgery. And we just pray, God, that you would heal them and touch them as only you can do. Help them to know that you're a God not only who loves them and is with them, but a God who cares. We pray for those that have lost loved ones and pray that you continue to pour out your comfort and peace upon them. We pray for those whose lives have been uh, disrupted in some way and they struggle just to be able to get up in the morning. I pray, God, that you would uh, give them a new perspective in life. Pray for those who have been negatively affected by the pandemic and we pray for its eradication in our world. Lord, even though it is put us in a difficult position and it's been a predicament that has been so hard to deal with. Lord, I pray that you would uh, unite us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to focus our attention upon the things that bring us unity and, and helps us to be the church that you've called us to be. Lord, I pray this morning that uh, we will be reminded of uh, the message from uh, 1 Corinthians 13 that love never insists on its own way, but always looks to the other. 
Lord, we desire a heart that uh, is fashioned in that way. I pray this morning that you would be with uh, the medical personnel and all those who are first responders to, to accidents and tragedy. I pray not only for their protection and well-being, but I just pray, Lord, that you would help them be energized in the fact that they are uh, contributing to the work of your kingdom and making a difference in the lives of the people that need their assistance. We pray, pray for law enforcement and we pray for uh, ambulance workers and we pray for uh, wreckers and EMTs and uh, all the people like firefighters who uh, put their lives on their own line daily for their service to the people. We pray for our military and those who are in harm's way where war and animosity and hostility uh, are rampant. Lord, we know that the only way that we can have true peace in the world is uh, is through you. And I pray this morning that you would send out your Holy Spirit upon Pastor David as he brings the message. Help us to be open and receptive to what it is you're trying to teach us. And I pray, Lord, that you would enable our congregation to grow and to be the body of Christ that you've called us to be. And may our time together be well spent this morning as we worship you and lift up your holy name. Enable us to carry it forth this week into your world. For all the glory and the honor belong to you, O God. And here we are to worship. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God. Hey, boys and girls, Mr. Doug here. And I'm once again going to talk to you today about something really unique and uh, uh, Sally. What do you mean, wait a minute? What, 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 hold on, hold on. What, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I see. You got your pen. What are you writing here? Are you writing a letter to someone? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm videotaping and now you're, you're writing a letter. So what are you doing? What are, what are you writing here? Oh, you have an assignment. Assignment from school, huh? And your assignment was to find someone who is the most important person in your life. Hmm. 
I'm thinking that that person should start with a D. You don't know. That's, I was hinting for me. You were going to do it more of a logical way, huh? Oh, you were going to put an ad in the paper. Well, <laughs> well, now this is intriguing, kids. So what have you wrote down here? Let's see what you're, who are you looking for? You're looking for someone that has mercy. Well, I, I can see that, Sally, why you want somebody. Mercy says you want them to always show love and be kind. When you when you when you do things that are bad, you know, be kind of okay. You, I thought I might have that. You want someone that is observant. What what do you mean by observant? Someone who always pays attention to you. I do. I mean, you want somebody who pays attention to you and alert to your needs. Well, okay. I, I see what else you got wrote down here. You want somebody that's tender. Oh, you want somebody that's willing to hold your hand when you're scared or. Or, you know, fix you up when you have a boo-boo. Well, okay, I can see that. What else do you want? Are oh, you willing? they got to be helpful. Okay. Uh, you know, they help encourage you during good times and bad. Okay, okay, I can see that. And then, uh, oh, this is a very honest one you wrote here. You said they have to have an eternity of patience. <laughs> I, just because, you know, they're just always going to be patient with you. Okay, okay. And what's this last one? You put down, they have to radiate the light of joy and the love of Christ in their life. Hmm. So you're looking for somebody who has mercy, they're observant, they're tender, they're helpful, they have an eternity of patience, and they radiate the love of Christ. Well, I can tell you right now, it's probably not me. I, I know that doesn't surprise you, but you know who that is. And you already know who it is. Because you already spelled it out here. You did. When you said mercy, observe, tender, helpful, eternity, radiant. What's those letters spell? They spell mother. That's right, boys and girls. Mother. Yes. Now I want to point something out to you, Sally. Not everybody who is biologically is a mother. There are a lot of people that are mothers to you in the church. Basically, anyone who has those characteristics, your Sunday school teacher, the choir leader, people who encourage you, pray for you all the time, tell you that you do good, tell you about Christ, have that radiant love. Yes, that's right. One of the ladies of the church gave Sally and me a little dolly that she made. She crocheted it herself. Yes. And if that doesn't say motherly love, I don't know what does. On this day, we set aside to celebrate all mothers. We need to remember that there's more to being a mom than having children. A mom is a person that transcends, and that's a big word, isn't it? That transcends and is there for every child and every person. And every female in the church usually and almost always meets those criteria. They're always thinking about you. They're always willing to encourage you. They love you and they pray for you. And that is a true blessing. A blessing that we all have and we can celebrate from God this day. Until next time, I hope that you're all doing well. Hope to see you at church. Know that me and Sally love you and we're praying for you. Bye. <clears throat> this time we want to take a moment and consider what God is asking us to give back to God through God's church and um, our giving is it's not so much that God needs our money our giving is an important part of our faith and our faith development we are called by God to give back to God and it helps us to grow in our faith but it does also allow us to provide opportunities such as worship and other opportunities to grow in our faith like uh, Bible study and Sunday school as well. So we want to consider what we give back to God. Those of you who are here, there's baskets around the room for you to drop your offering plate. Those online, you can see the alternate uh, giving opportunities uh, there on your screen. And we thank you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and loving and giving God, we thank you and praise you as you give us all things. And Lord, we ask your help to be good stewards of what you give us. 
guide us and direct us in our giving, not only giving of our, our wealth but our, and finances, but giving of our time and our talents. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. story oh gather around now and listen to my song oh gather around now listen to my story Gather round now, listen to my song about my Savior Jesus, and how he came to free us. One day he'll return to take us home. Singing, oh, oh, oh I'm singing about my Jesus. Oh, 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 I'm singing about my Lord, the King of all creation. Every child and nation, one day he'll return to take us home. Oh, gather round now, listen to my story. Oh, gather round now, listen to my song about my Savior Jesus, and how he came to free us. One day he'll return to take us home. Here we go. Singing, oh, 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 I'll sing about my Jesus. Oh, 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 I'll sing about my Lord, the King of all creation, of every tribe and nation. One day he'll return to take us home. Play that accordion. Singing, oh, 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 I'll sing about my Jesus. Oh, 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 I'll sing about my Lord, the King of all creation, of every child and nation. One day he'll return to take us home. And one day he'll return to take us Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Of course, you probably noticed they moved the banners forward. And I, I was joking with them earlier that when I saw that, that they just pulled them up so they could hide <laughs> behind them. But actually, it's so uh, there's a backdrop behind me. It helps. Uh, with the online uh, portion of our worship as well. But I, this morning I want to say happy Mother's Day uh, to all the mothers and to all the like mothers among us. Uh, like mothers are those who have been like mothers to us, especially those that have helped us to grow in our faith. Uh, I've had many of them in my lifetime. Had a lot when I was a child. My mother needed a lot of help <laughs> with my brothers and I to keep us in line, especially at church. Um, but uh, I do say Happy Mother's Day. And, uh, um, you know, anybody can be a mother to somebody by loving them, uh, supporting them, encourage them. And I've had many that have also held me accountable, not only as a child, 
but even as an adult, as, as a pastor. And so we do say Happy Mother's Day this morning. Today we continue our sermon or worship series on the Acts of Easter people. And today our scripture lesson comes from Acts 10 and verses 44 through 48. Would you hear these words? While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded but that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptism, uh, baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I ask that you pray for me and with me as I offer this prayer of illumination for us. Creator and maker of us all, bless the words of my lips and the thoughts that we form. Grow in us, Lord. Show us your ways and inspire us to live by your truth, to live as your Easter people. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Open our hearts and minds to what you would say to us today. Pour out your Holy Spirit on me in this moment and let there be more of you and less of me. And I pray this in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever been so distracted that you missed out on something important? I'd say that most of us have uh, been distracted allow things to distract us so that we missed out on something important and a lot of times our distractions will help uh, will make us miss out on what God through the Holy Spirit is doing among us um, we at times allow many things to distract us we we allow life our health um, our work our biases um, our money our lack of money um, Sometimes even church or religion or some of those things, a few of the things that can cause us to be distracted so that we miss out. And sometimes, yes, we miss out on what God is doing around us. And we may miss out on God's grace. The author, Catherine Luke, shares a story about Hannah. Hannah saw her father every day, at least technically, he would, she would pass him in the hallway and say a quick hello as she went off to something else. Or, and occasionally she would pop into his office and, and ask for his help or complain about her day. But strangely, Hannah missed her father. She wondered when she finally slowed down enough to think about it, push away those distractions she wondered what had happened she thought about those times when she sat down with her father for long talks of deep daughter daddy time and she wondered what happened to those times why it was all just quick moments before racing off to an event. She asked herself, what happened? This is the question that Hannah asked, was asking herself. She knew her father hadn't changed. He was still there, available to talk with his arms wide open. No, the problem wasn't his, it was hers. She had her mind so occupied with a thousand different things in a thousand different directions and she failed to quiet her thoughts long enough to really spend time with her father. She had been missing out. Well, in our scripture today, we have Easter people paying attention and not missing out. But to really understand that they were paying attention, we need to look back, look at the back story of this. Chapter 10 begins 
We were told about Cornelius, who was a centurion in Caesarea, who we're told that was a devout, God-fearing man. And it's important for us to think about Caesarea. Caesarea was a Gentile town. It was the seat of the Roman government. It was built by the Roman government. And the majority of the people who lived there were Romans or Gentiles, people who were not a part of the family of God, the Jews. Well, we're told that one day that uh, Cornelius has a vision and an angel comes to him and this scares Cornelius. He had never experienced anything like this before, but he has sense enough to say, what is it, Lord? And the Lord says, your prayers and your alms have risen as a memorial to God. Then he tells Cornelius to send to Joppa to, to find a certain man named Simon who is called Peter. And then Cornelius does so. He sends two slaves and, and a soldier to go and find this Simon who is known as Peter. Well, next in chapter 10, we have Peter there one afternoon, he's hungry, and he's on, he, he was waiting for the food to be prepared, and he went up to the roof, and he fell into a trance. And something like a sheet was lowered from heaven, filled of all kinds of four-footed animals and the birds of the air. And a voice said, Peter, get up, kill, eat. And Peter's response was, No, Lord, nothing unclean or profane has ever touched my lips. And this happened three times. Peter woke from his trance, puzzled by this vision. And as he puzzled about it, these men arrived at the, the gate asking for Simon, who is called Peter. And the Lord said to Peter, get up, go down and meet them. I have seen, sent these men. And Peter pays attention to God in that moment. And just as Cornelius paid attention to God and sent those men there. And Peter goes down, he finds out that they, why they had come and he invites them in and provides lodging. And he gets up and goes the next day with them to Caesarea, this unclean town. Peter paid attention to God, and then we hear that Peter finds out from Cornelius why he was sent, and Peter says to him, you know I'm not supposed to be here. My people don't interact with you. But I... He began to preach the good news to them at that moment and he told them that he understood that God showed no partiality and as Peter preached, the Holy Spirit fell on those people gathered there. And it, it wasn't just Cornelius, it was other Gentile believers in God. It was his, it, they were amazed at the room and actually it was also some other Jewish Christians that had followed Peter to that place. And when the Holy Spirit fell on them, they began praising God and speaking in tongues, just as it did on Pentecost for those Jews that were gathered in Jerusalem. And it astounded Peter and those that had come with him. But Peter again paid attention to God and he said, who can withhold the waters of baptism from these that God would give the Holy Spirit to? So he ordered them to be baptized. They didn't miss out on what God was doing. That was so important. We are, and we recall the events of Pentecost, and we are to recall the Pentecost, but there's a difference the biggest difference is that these were Gentiles. These were ones that 
the Jews considered unclean that were receiving the Holy Spirit on that day. They, and it was astonishing, but they paid to attention. Also, these Gentiles paid attention to God to receive the Holy Spirit. But they found out, as Peter did, that no one was excluded from the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God was open to all. God welcomes all, and that's not always what we want to hear. Of course, Peter later got in trouble for the company he kept when he got back to Jerusalem where they uh, questioned him, why did he go to the Gentiles? But through the Holy Spirit and Peter explaining his vision to them, the leaders in Jerusalem, and, and I'd say with the other Jewish Christians, they were able to change the minds, the opinions of those in Jerusalem. Who is God calling us to invite, to welcome who may be different from us? Easter people pay attention. They pay attention to what God through the Holy Spirit is doing among them. Think about what we would be missing out if Cornelius and Peter and these uh, Jewish Christians and these Gentile, newly Gentile Christians hadn't paid attention to God. We may not be sitting here today. We may miss out on the grace of God, the grace that we need to survive. We wouldn't be a part of what God is doing in the world. We wouldn't hear the good news preached to us. And we wouldn't be transformed by Christ into the new life that he offers. David Messer in his commentary says, if we pay attention every day, we will be surprised and maybe even astonished at the things happening to us. Maybe we need to be like Hannah in her story and think about what happened. What are we missing out on? Maybe we need to do more than just think about it. Maybe we need to do something. Maybe we need to spend time with our Father in heaven. Spend time with God each day. As it takes a connection to God through Jesus who is the true vine. To see what God is doing. To not miss out on God's grace. What is God calling us as Easter people to pay attention to? Someone needing to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, someone who needs a church family, someone that needs to be invited to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. We might miss out on somebody in need, somebody being welcome to this place. We might miss out on God reviving us to, meet, to reach more people. We may miss out on a new beginning. Will you pay attention to what God through the Holy Spirit is doing among us? May it be so. Thanks be to God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God for Easter people who pay attention. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all stand together here and sing this last song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Live for you. Yeah. 
Uh, you may have noticed, as always, we have beautiful flowers on the on the communion table, and those were given in memory of Guy Phillips by Sharon Phillips, and we always appreciate uh, whoever gives uh, flowers to beautify the sanctuary for worship on Sunday mornings. Uh, we always want to have a record that you're joining us, either online, you can make a comment, or if you're in person, there are cards in the pew that you can not only register your attendance, but on the flip side, uh, there's a place for you to offer a, a prayer request if you have one. Um, next Sunday will be our last um, uh, Getting Connected um, session. Uh, we had our second one today during the Sunday school hour, so 9.45 to 10.45. And and uh, if you're new to the church or if you just want to find out opportunities to get better connected, you're welcome to come and join us in the parlor, which is uh, right across from all the kitchen area. Um, 
We wanted you to, um, if you're planning on coming to the Luau to RSVP, and there are cards out in the narthex where you can do that, so we'll get a number of how many people to expect for the food that will be provided. So please uh, sign up if you're planning on coming, and that is May the 22nd. It's coming up on us quickly. That's less than two weeks from away, so uh, we invite you to do that, um, or you can call the church office. Uh, several people didn't get to meet this past Tuesday because they had other commitments, uh, but there will be a meeting at, in the smaller sanctuary at 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning for all those who are interested in serving in their clothing closet ministry. And I'm sure you've already seen, uh, every Sunday we always have our announcement sheet that includes announcements that we don't lift up but I wanted to lift up a couple of three of those from this because they're coming up on us quickly and they need special attention um, we want you to know that uh, the uh, they are collecting items on Mondays from 9 to noon over in the annex which is to my far right um, for uh, donations for the yard sale the Highway 127 yard sale and uh, for those of you who are maybe new to the church uh, the proceeds from that yard sale uh, go to fund scholarships for uh, college students so um, we invite you to participate in that if you have things that uh, you uh, want to contribute to that I wanted to say a word of uh, thanks and appreciation to all those who showed up yesterday morning to uh, help the garden club. Uh, if you look out particularly out in the garden area, uh, you'll note uh, what a beautiful job they did planting new flowers and weeding and also mulching. So it looks great. They always do a great job and you're invited to be a part of the group. They're always looking for people to help on the second Saturday of each month from 8 to 10. And finally, I really want to uh, lift up um, our... Uh, annual golf tournament we didn't get to have it last year because of the pandemic but it's on june the 13th and that is a fundraiser for our ministry with the martin our partner school martin elementary and so all the donations that come in from the golfers and also those who would like to sponsor if you're not a golfer uh, they will they will accept uh, donations as a sponsor or just any donation uh, but that's an important ministry, and we encourage you to uh, sign up, call the church office, or, or just let us know, and we'll be glad to put you on the, on the tea time, and uh, uh, or if you want to sponsor, we would appreciate that. We've been reminded this morning, um, so beautifully by Pastor David, that uh, we as Easter people should always have our eyes open and be attentive to the places and in the people that God is trying to uh, uh, help us aware of his, of God's presence. And so um, we encourage you as you leave this morning or as you um, finish tuning in uh, to be more attentive and to be on, on a watchful eye uh, because God is wanting to do a miracle and uh, God is wanting to reveal the divine nature to all of us. And now will you receive the benediction, please. As you go this morning, may you go in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, who is always there to remind us to stay awake and pay attention. For at the moment in which we least expect it, God is trying to move and help us to become aware of the divine presence all around us and in us and through us. Will you go in that assurance? In the name of Christ.